Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Thursday, November 17th. I'm your host for today's program, and many of the stories we read here can also be found at our websites. And here are some of the news stories from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. In recognition of the National Native American Heritage Month, SBAs, or Small Business Associations, November 23rd web chat will highlight Native American small businesses. The U.S. Small Business Administration's Office of Native American Affairs helps to ensure that American Indians, Native Alaskans, and Native Hawaiians who want to start or grow a small business have access to SBA's entrepreneurial development tools and lending and contracting programs. SBA's web chat series provides small business owners with an opportunity to discuss relevant business issues online with experts, industry leaders, and successful entrepreneurs. Chat participants have direct, real-time access to the web chats via questions they submit online in advance and during the live session. Participants will gain valuable information on how to participate in the program to gain increased access to government contracting opportunities. Participants can join the live web chat and also post questions before November 23rd by going online to www.sba.gov and you click on the web chat event under What's New? The Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian will honor the traditions and history of the Menominee Nation of Wisconsin with a special Menominee Nation Cultural Day celebration on Saturday, December 10th. The event features a variety of activities that are free and open to the public. The Menominee's rich history and residency in the area known, now known as the state of Wisconsin and parts of Michigan and Illinois date back uh, 10,000 years. During the treaty area in the early 1800s, the Menominee occupied a land base estimated at 10 million acres. Through a series of seven treaties during the 1800s, the tribe witnessed its land base erode to little more than 235,000 acres it now occupies today. Dave Greeno, director of Menominee Tribe's Historic Preservation Office, will host two presentations about the tribe's unique history that day in the NMIA Rasmussen Theater. As part of the celebration, the Menominee Drum Group uh, Straight Across and traditional dancers from the nation will perform in the museum beginning at 11 a.m. For more information about the National Museum of the American Indian, visit www.americanindian.si.edu. And talking about the Menominees, the Menominee Nation of Wisconsin will hold the grand opening of the Menominee Cultural Museum on November 17th at 10 a.m. Uh, that's actually starting today. The event begins with a traditional prayer and opening with Chairman Rando Chevalier. Uh, followed by uh, other members of tribal leadership. Historic Preservation Director as well, David Greeno, will address participants with information regarding the museum's inception and vision for the future. Veterans of the Menominee Nation were conducting a flag-raising ceremony along with that. The Menominee Cultural Museum is in a state-of-the-art, environmentally controlled museum facility. The museum was built in the shape and form of the Menominee Grand Medicine Lodge. It was the idea of the museum staff to have the museum built in that manner because of the sacred and ceremonial Menominee artifacts that will be repatriated from other museums throughout the United States, perhaps around the world. Artifacts that will be featured will be the huge Menominee ancestral bear that was carved by the late James Frechette Jr., along with original Menominee five clan figures of the bear, eagle, moose, wolf, and crane. The museum is located in Kashina, Wisconsin, and for more, for more information, you call 715-799-5258 or email uh, dgreeno at mitw.org, and those numbers will be up on the board. There are Native American drummers, fry bread cooks, and dancers at the Minneapolis Schools for the district's annual celebration of American Indian culture. 
The district says today, November 17th, is Native American Family Involvement Day, which aims to build connections to the American Indian community with hopes that it will help Native American students do better in school. The first Native American Family Day was in the year 2006, following an agreement between the Minneapolis School Board and leaders of the local Native American community. The school has events scheduled throughout the day in more than a dozen schools, including drummers at Ramsey Arts, a performing arts magnet school, Indian Freibra during lunch at Longfellow Elementary School and a smudging ceremony at Anderson United Elementary School. Gonna chase, uh, chase all the boogie, boogie people out of the building. A member of the North Carolina Commission on Indian Affairs has been elected chairman of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina. Unofficial returns show Paul Brooks of Pembroke won the post on the November 15th election with almost 1,800 of the approximately 4,000 votes cast for the four candidates running on that ticket. Brooks told uh, uh, the uh, Fayetteville Observer that he thinks voters supported him because of his experience. He is a, has been a member of the North Carolina Commission since 1991 and has served as its chairman. Brooks was also a member of the Lumbee Regional Development Association for over 19 years. Brooks' term runs through January of 2013. Contract health services within the Cherokee Nation will receive additional funding due to an increase in casino dividends. The Cherokee Nation Tribal Council voted to increase the monthly dividend the tribe receives from its for-profit corporations by 5% this earlier this week, with the additional funding going exclusively to contract health care. With the November 14th vote, the tribe now receives 35% of the corporation's annual profits. It will take effect once Principal Chief Bill John Baker signs the bill into law, something he previously had pledged to do. Once signed into law, the bill will help provide additional funds for eyeglasses, prosthesis, hearing aids, cancer treatments, and other contract health services for Cherokee Nation citizens who live within the tribe's 14-county jurisdiction there in Oklahoma. Nevada tribes now have a seat at the governor's cabinet table. Governor Brian Sandoval on November 15th announced his appointment of uh, Ted uh, Kwasula as a member of his cabinet. Kwasula is a chairman of the Nevada Indian Commission and a member of the Wallapay tribe of northern Arizona. He lives in Henderson. The governor's office says, according to tribal representatives and state archives, the appointment marks the first time in Nevada history that tribes have had formal representation at the cab cabinet level. Quazela spent 26 years in law enforcement with the Bureau of Indian Affairs. He holds degrees in police science and administration from Northern Arizona University and also attended the Kennedy School of Government program at Harvard and the FBI National Academy. And they say there's less than 45 days left to go out and shop there before that big uh, day on the calendar next month. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. Please join with us again and miigwech for coming this time.